All right, welcome, 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 welcome. Uh, my name is John Oliver. No, I'm kidding. Um, other, no, nothing really. I thought that was good. Um, all right, welcome to uh, uh, the February edition of the Drupal NYC Meetup. My name is Alex Ross. Um, I work right here at NBC Universal, and I will be your ho host for the evening. Um, we'll start off with a couple just quick housekeeping notes. Some of you have probably heard this once or twice before. Uh, please mute your devices if you have devices that are uh, set to jingle or make noise. Um, uh, during the course of the uh, uh, meetup tonight, we ask that if you have questions or want to want to contribute, that you uh, grab a microphone. There will be somebody walking around with a mic um, uh, during the course of the evening, but please do make sure so that everybody can hear you, and then uh, it can be picked up during recordings and all that kind of good stuff. Um, restrooms, we have those. Go out the doors. They're all the way down the hallway on your left or on your right, depending on which side of the, the, uh, the, the hall you go down. Um, uh, in addition, Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi information is down here at the bottom on every slide. And there's also a card, little postcard thing in the back by the computer in the back there um, if you need to get on, uh, on Wi-Fi. OK. Um, connect with us. We have all sorts of ways to get in touch with us. We have Twitter. We have Slack. We have um, uh, Twitter and Slack. Uh, we also have meetup.com, um, which we'll talk about in a second. But uh, please make sure that you're following us on Twitter, uh, twitter.com slash DrupalNYC. Um, join Slack. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, but yeah, please keep in touch with the, the, the people who organize this event. Keep in touch with the other people you meet at this event. Um, there's lots of good things that go on in between each, uh, each meetup. Uh, agenda. Uh, announcements. So I will continue doing announcements right about now. Um, presentations. We have a, a, a presentation today. It's all about um, making, well, I'll talk about that in a second. But um, we have a, a really meaty uh, presentation today that we're uh, we're excited for. Um, we'll have some quick closing remarks, and then there's an after party downstairs at Bill's Bar and Burger, sponsored by our good friends at Fastlane. Okay, uh, so today's talk. Um, so usually we have a mix. We have sometimes we have lightning talks, which are like quick five minute, ten minute talks. Sometimes we have a couple of longer talks. Today we're actually you know dedicating um, the meetup to a, a, a really good topic. Uh, we're going to be talking about how to turn Drupal 8 into an advanced web GIS, which I believe stands for Ge Geographical Information System. I learned that earlier today just for this occasion. Um, a, a GIS 2.0 application uh, with the GeoField mapping stack. And uh, uh, Italo is here somewhere. There he is. He's going to be talking about that in, uh, in just a couple of minutes. Click. Yes, excellent. Okay, organizers. We have people who help organize this event and other events um, throughout the year. Uh, please take note of the people who are organizing. All the organizers that are in the room go like this. Um, our newest organizer to make the slide, J.D. Leonard. Hello, J.D. Woo! Um, but yeah, we like to put this slide up not because we are so self-congratulatory. -congr it's more that we want you guys to know who's organizing because we really do value the feedback that we get from you. Um, we get good ideas from people all the time. They come up in the middle and go, you know, you should really talk about this. Or, you know, it would be great if we could do that. Um, those kinds of ideas um, are, are terrific, and we really would love for you to, to find one of the organizers and make sure that you, um, you let us know what that idea is, and, and we can see how, how it might work out with, uh, with the group. So those are your organizers. Go to click. Okay. Excuse me. Um, uh, so a quick update before we get to our talk. Uh, we've been, some of you know this, those of you who haven't been to a meeting in a little while or haven't been to one before or don't know this, we're in the process of actually creating a nonprofit called Drupal NYC, um, Drupal NYC Inc. Um, and uh, that is in process right now. So basically this is kind of a four-step process. And we are done, for, for the most part, with steps one and two, which is what you see up here. Um, we, we've kind of figured out what this nonprofit is, um, is going to be all about, kind of how it will be structured. Um, part of the reason for, for doing this is we want to make sure that we're being as transparent as we possibly can. There are certain events that cost money, and we have to you know, be able to manage that money in the best uh, interest of this, of this group um, and in a very transparent way. So we want to make sure that we're, we're doing that. Um, and we also want to make sure that the right people have kind of the right responsibilities. Um, and we don't just, you know, put things on, on, you know, one person's shoulders that, you know, is a single point of failure, that sort of thing. Um, so uh, recently, I, I think it was about a week ago, um, the actual incorporation went through. Um, and we, we sent all the paperwork that needed to be sent to the state uh, attorney general of the state of New York. 
and we got back kind of all of our relevant, um, you're good to go. Um, we got approval from Dries, who's the founder of Drupal, to use the word Drupal in our uh, nonprofit's name, which was surprisingly a lot harder than it seemed to get done. Um, he, 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 he's a busy guy, is basically what it boiled down to. Um, and we, we had a hard time kind of getting that in front of him, but we have approval there. So we're, we're doing great, but we're not done yet. And um, there's a couple more things that we have to get done before we're really um, out the door. Um, so uh, the next kind of steps, and this is what we're doing, is we're making sure to kind of set up the actual um, initial board and um, set up the, the governing rules and the, the, um, uh, the various processes that will have to be in place. Uh, in order to, like I said, be as transparent with what this group is doing, making sure we know what the responsibilities are, what we can and can't do, what we should and should not do as an, uh, you know, as a board. Um, you know, an, an example that came up today, actually, I was talking to Sean, um, was you know around uh, accepting gifts. If anybody wants to give me a gift, that's fine. You know, but um, if we, as an organization, wanted to accept a gift, we have to make sure it's not a gift that's going to like drive us into the ground. Hey, we're giving you this farm upstate, but it's you know had toxic leaks going on for the last 50 years, and it just cost eight million dollars to clean up. Right? Like that would be a problem for us to deal with, um, and it would it would certainly not fall under the auspices of the the, the spirit of this this organization and why we we're putting it together. Um, so we are um, we are set with our actual our first board meeting is going to be um, in about a week and a half, uh, or what's today in about a week, um, and uh, we're going to use that time to make sure that we have all those processes in place and, and all that good stuff. We are you know very very interested again in feedback, and we're very very interested in being as transparent as we can. Um, with this uh, uh, organization that we're putting together. So if you have questions, if you want to get involved, please let us know. Uh, Slack is definitely the best way to kind of like come in there and say, hey, that sounds really interesting. I'm interested in doing that. Um, there are still um, some positions that we have to fill. Um, so if that people are, are someone who's very interested in, in for example, um, joining the board as secretary, that has not yet been figured out. Um, after this initial um, term of the of this board, we'll have like kind of more standard elections and, and things like that will go on, and, and we'll have that all figured out. Um, and then last is is kind of validating all of this. We're going to make sure that we've done everything right, um, file all the, the the paperwork we need to file um, once we have everything in order, and, and that's what's coming. So that's the status. That's the status report of where we are. Um, I hope that uh, people will get involved. I hope that everybody sees the value in having a nonprofit like this attached to this group, um, and uh, and I hope people will kind of help out. All right, here we go. Right. Venue, food and drink sponsored by NBC Universal. Yay! Thank you, NBC Universal. Woo! Yay! Um, yeah, in in you know, in all all joking aside, NBC has, has been. Yeah, I mean, I, I work for them, and so it's like pat pat pat. Um, but they've been really great about letting us use this space and, and providing food for this meetup for a while now. Um, and uh, and you know, everyone should watch more NBC because of it. All right, um, coming up, here we go. Uh, Fastly, our good friends at Fastly, woo! They have been sponsoring an after party for us, so come downstairs after the, uh, the meetup is over, get a, get a drink, um, talk a little bit more with your, your friends and neighbors and, and, and folks that you've met while you're here. Um, and uh, yeah, so thank you to the, uh, the good folks at Fastly. Click. Uh, photos and hashtags, <coughs> excuse me. Um, Feel free to take photos. Um, if you put them up on the social medias, please use the hashtag DrupalNYC. Um, make your friends and neighbors and coworkers jealous that they weren't here and you were. Okay. Uh, the Drupal Association. Uh, I, I give this reminder every time, and I will continue to do so. Please become a member of the Drupal Association. The Drupal Asso you can be an individual member. Your company can be a member. There's all sorts of ways to, to help support. Um, but the Drupal Association is there to make sure that Drupal as a community, Drupal as a project, um, continues to thrive and continues to have the resources it needs to be a, a, a successful and thriving project. Um, they are responsible for Drupal.com, Drupal.com, Drupal.org, um, and you know uh, all of the the various tooling that goes into making sure that the, the project uh, can be contributed to. Um, and uh, they're doing some really interesting work, like right now, for example, on uh, kind of modernizing the the process by which you submit code. Um, to to Drupal Core or to any of the contrib modules, um, they're moving to a more modern um, uh, a kind of a. It's not called a pull request in, in in the new world. It's called something else. I forget what it's called. 
I'm looking at a merger credit. <laughs> uh, but anyway, it'll be a much, uh, a much more um, modern and streamlined process. But that's one, just one example of some of the stuff that's being worked on right now. They're constantly making improvements to Drupal.org. The support that you, you know, you can give um, really does help out, and uh, it does, it genuinely does, kind of translate directly to making sure the project thrives. So please consider becoming a member of the Drupal Association at uh, Drupal.org/association. Very cleverly named um, and uh, and hard to to forget. Okay. Next, here we go, uh, Slack. Slack is definitely the best way for you to kind of get in touch with and, and keep, uh, keep up with um, the organizers of uh, Drupal NYC, and it's also a really good way to get, get in touch with the various people that you'll meet at these meetups. If you met somebody at a meetup three meetups ago, then chances are they're on Slack, and you can kind of like, you know, reconnect and, and figure that all out. Please go to drupal.myc slash Slack, and, um, and feel free to join our Slack channel, um, and uh, yeah have some good conversation in Slack. Okay, free to join. Upcoming events, Florida Drupal Camp. Um, coming up in three days? No, four, a week? A week. Uh, so well, as soon as you're done uh, with Valentine's Day, you can go right to JFK, right to LaGuardia, and head down to Florida, and go to Florida Drupal Camp. Um, uh, in addition, there's Nerd Summit. Um, Nerd Summit, does anybody want to talk about what Nerd Summit is real quick? I don't remember Nerd Summit. No? But it's coming up, you yes, sir. Specific, right? Oh yeah, you're gonna talk. Make me feel like I gotta go read the page. Um, I'm, I'm presenting, but it's not, and I'm not doing. I'm doing web forms, but it's like intro without being too droopy. So it's it's like open source, open source software, Drupal, WordPress tools, Pattern Lab. It's two days. I think it's it's thirty bucks. It sounds like a great venue. There you go. I also like the idea of open sauce, right? Yeah. All right, uh, and then uh, you can always check out um, uh, upcoming events at uh, DrupalCal and groups.drupal.org slash events. Um, I know that DrupalCon North America is also coming up, um, but I guess it hasn't quite made the slide, but it is the largest Drupal event um, of the year, typically. It's, it's usually like three, you know, two, two to 4,000 people, depending on um, what they got going on. This year it's in, um, Seattle, Seattle, Washington. Thank you, so, yes. Um, so definitely, it, you know, that, that is where um, you really uh, uh, get to hear from the core contributors, you get to hear from the, the major projects, and, and, and pretty much everybody who's really trying to push um, the limits of what Drupal can do and, and kind of figure out what the next step of, of what Drupal is. Um, and there's also tons of trainings that go on at, at DrupalCon North America. Um, there are sprints where you can get involved. If, even if you've never written code before, they have like kind of a, a setup so that you can kind of get involved with uh, contributing code, contributing documentation, helping to triage bug reports, all sorts of things that you can do to get involved. There's lots of sprints that go on there. So I, I definitely recommend um, going to, uh, to DrupalCon in Seattle on uh, April like 8th, I think. That week, the week of April 8th. So uh, book your tickets. Okay. Next. Interested in speaking. We love to get new speakers. We love to get old speakers who have new topics to talk about. Um, but uh, yeah, if you're if you're interested in speaking, you have a topic that uh, you think would really be useful to the to the to the group, we'd love to hear about it. If you have a specific topic that you're really interested in hearing about, um, we'd love to hear that too. Uh, we can often kind of kind of pull a resource that we know, pull someone together who can talk through uh, you know most topics. Um, so if there's something specific that you've been hoping to to hear uh, at a Drupal meetup. Um, please, you know, let the organizers know, or go to drupal.nyc/suggest and, and you know tell us. Okay. Next, here we go. Who's hiring? Um, so the kid in the picture is going to be your boss one day. That's my older son Henry. He's adorable. Um, if anybody would like him to, you know, keep, just let me know. If he's driving me crazy. Um, no, I'm kidding. But that, uh, but yeah, who's hiring? Anybody hiring? Yes, sir. One sentence about what your uh, what your company is, what you're hiring for. Yeah, hi everybody. My name is uh, Abdullahi. Um, I, Abdul. I have a very small startup um, with uh, small teams in West Africa. I'm based here in New York for ten years. I went to school here, and I'm interested in meeting Drupal architects and web de uh, developers, uh, basically to help me put together 
the team that will interface with my small team on the ground to introduce really cutting edge Drupal based solutions, uh, most specifically for um, banking sector financial industry um, in sub Saharan Africa. Thank you. Uh, my email, if, uh, if you, uh, you are interested, my email is office at newpos, N E W P O S S S dot com. The site is not up yet, but that's my email. Thank you. All right. Anybody else want to uh, jump in? We got one more. Hold on. Here we go. Okay. My name is Juana, Juana Harabadil, Barnard College, Columbia University. We are hiring a full staff Drupal developer. We are hiring a full stack Drupal developer because we've just switched technology stack from Microsoft SharePoint to Drupal. And we have no skills, no knowledge, no nothing. Drupal is a totally new language for us. I have some job descriptions with me if anyone wants to see them. Thank you very much. Congratulations on moving away from SharePoint. Okay. Here we go. All right. Uh, here we go. Uh, introductions. Take two minutes. It says five minutes, but take three minutes and uh, introduce yourself to somebody who you don't know in the room. Say hello. See what's going on. What are you interested in? Why are you here? And uh, I will find the most inopportune time during the conversation to interrupt you, and we'll continue after introductions. Begin. Okay. And stop. Hopefully you were like right in the middle of that perfect conversation that you've been yearning for for years. Um, what? Oh, no, we'll get everything working. I'm, uh, don't, don't, don't worry about it. Okay. Um, so hopefully you, you, you met some, some good new people. You can continue that conversation at the end of the meetup downstairs at Bill's Bar, sponsored by our good friends at Fastly. Um, okay, so we're gonna we're gonna uh, get. Uh, am I saying it right, Italo? Italo. I got the accent right in the wrong place. Um, we're gonna get uh, we're gonna get Italo all plugged in and set up. Um, in the meantime, um, uh, usually I, I try and find a good joke around this time. It usually has to do with this building being built in 1930. No. Um, how are we do? Oh, can um, Holin? Can you? You're doing it. She's doing it. And we're good. All right, eat to low, everybody. Take it away. Already set up? Yeah, no. you're ready no. to go? I mean, too easy. Let's see if everything works. First of all, the internet connection. Okay, this is something that we are going to, to see how to build it. Okay, this is the final step of this presentation. And let's go back to the first one. Okay, I, I should first apologize for some, some matters. My English is this one, so sorry. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> especially if you have got some questions, be slow in making that. Second one, my Mac is missing the space bar, so I won't look so so clever on this. And uh, that's almost it. Okay, we set up with JD uh, a unique uh, presentation for this afternoon because uh, it will uh, uh, it will show the integration of this uh, so-called geofield stack module in D8 that comprises four modules: geofield itself and three others. So quite a lot of stuff to, to speak about, to speak out, and uh, one hour and a half of presentation, con including also questions and eventual answer answers. Uh, but I, I realized that uh, it might be even short because I, will, I might speak uh, one day and a half about this, uh, this stuff. Uh, so I apologize because I will, there, are, there is a lot of stuff to, to show, so I will try to be quick. Uh, making a sort of uh, overview of uh, all these topics and uh, sort of technical implementation. We will skip a lot of uh, technical steps, st technical configuration that might deserve further description. Uh, 
and probably new occasion will be for uh, more investigate them. Uh, if you have got some answer, you can stop me whenever you want, uh, but if you can take them at the end, probably will make me uh, easier uh, to go on with this uh, timetable deadline and limited time. So this is the topic uh, of this presentation. We'll try to use Drupal 8 uh, and make it uh, as a sort of WebGIS. I call it WebGIS 2.0 because, uh, of course, there is the interaction of the user. It's not just uh, publishing content, but uh, makes the user the, 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 the king of the content uh, that might be managed and used by him. <coughs> Who I am? I should define myself as a, a freelance. Uh, experienced Drupal developer, as I work with Drupal, I've been working for seven years, eight years, since the, the issue of the D7. And uh, recently I moved to New York, as I was called as a Drupal web solution architect uh, for the United Nations. I've got a long-standing experience uh, in developing uh, open source application, and I've got, since long time, special interest in uh, WebGIS and re more recently with Drupal. And uh, when D8 uh, has been issued, uh, I began developing this geofield map module that integrates uh, upon uh, geofield. And uh, after a remarkable turn of events, to quote someone else, I became maintainer, the main maintainer of this geofield mapping stack that includes geofield, leaflet, and geocoder. You can learn about me more on LinkedIn and uh, on my fantastic uh, website, personal website, now it's down. It's a <coughs> in the, in an old D7 application that probably is there. Uh, why? Drupal and WebGIS. Web because uh, there is a great opportunity to integrate uh, these uh, JavaScript mapping framework that are year-round with the, the Drupal capability of modeling everything, modeling entities, and uh, manage big data, and uh, implement scalable function. So the, the great achievement here will be to, to use, to take advantage of this uh, open, alpha open source uh, JavaScript framework for mapping with uh, Drupal, because everything we will see today is still Drupal, and will integrate perfectly with uh, whatever kind of Drupal solution, we might want to, to join to it. Web form and uh, whatever else. These are some screenshots of some recent and less recent uh, uh, solutions. For example, here it's nice to see how a web map application might be integrated with the sort of uh, data analysis, graphs, and, and whatever. This is Drupal. This is another project we did with Drupal. United Nations Agency some years ago. These are open data in, uh, in Italy. Okay. As it was in D7, also in D8, uh, in my honest opinion, geofield model is still the most uh, sophisticated one to turn Drupal into a web GIS because mainly is the only one able to manage uh, geodata that are not just points, but also geometries. So is able, is model schema to manage polylines, polygons, line string, and whatever. And is the only one that is able to do that. And the, its geo, uh, is Drupal 8 version takes av advantage of all the Drupal 8 uh, developing part patterns and tools uh, such as the services, the plugins, and the capability to integrate itself with the third-party uh, PHP libraries. Okay, we will see how. For sake of completeness, I should mention that uh, somebody comes to me asking for a solution. I will suggest also to uh, have a look to other possible alternatives like the geolocation module. It was quite used in D8. I tried it out. It is quite buggy for me and the style of Google Maps that is a very simple solution just to output, create an output to almost static maps. 
So it was fair to mention Nike. Uh, some few questions. How many of you are using maps in Drupal 8? Okay, not so many. I guess all the others would like to, unless you just came for the pizza. <laughs> that may be a good reason as well. And, uh, okay, so how many of you are using Geofill? Nice. What are you using then? What are you using? Static map. Okay, okay, so, okay. Good to know, and uh, also to know what is fair to describe. Okay, uh, is everybody here using Drupal with Composer? How many are using Composer for managing your Drupal application? Okay, <coughs> for in, in this context, Composer is mandatory because uh, these models, they do depend from external, they might depend from external PHP libraries that uh, won't be auto-loaded, otherwise if I don't use, we don't use Composer to, to build our application. It's very easy to use Composer with just. Okay, uh, some very brief description. The, we are going to describe advanced functionalities developed with the strict PHP and Drupal 8 standards with a great focus, I can say, really because I take great care about, about it, to the user experience and user interfaces, a lot of messages to the user to make them sure, to make sure that they, they are able to understand what the configuration they are for. The, all these will be, I mean, the application will be shown just in English, but there is multilingual support, of course. And uh, please consider that is everything a work in progress. So it's not perfect, neither complete, and uh, is full of, I mean, no, shouldn't be full, but maybe some bugs. <laughs> Absolutely, it shouldn't. And uh, of course, missing features. So it's a good occasion also for me to take some feedback. Actually, yeah, re regarding bugs, I'm quite proud to say that I wake up in the morning, I check the emails, and no, no, great, no great bothering about this. I mean, no, 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 no warming, no, no, uh, no non-application break, and very, very few issues, actually, on all of these, of these models. First of all, the Geofill model. The Geofill model is the one, is the core one, and I, I go very quickly here because this becomes a little bit more technical. It is fair just to show the, the, the application working than to explain it. Is there any, any questions so far? Okay. Okay. What does the geofill module does? It creates a geofill field type. So lets the Drupal be enabled to store and manage geographic data. Not just points, as I said, but also line, polygons, and multi-types, like multi-polygons and whatever. And it manages uh, this information in a format that is called a well-known text. That is quite typical of uh, MySQL and uh, whatever. So the geographical information is stored as a text in this kind of format that is called well-known text that is standardized. I mean, nothing that I invented by myself that is recognized by the International Standard Organization. And they implement some basic widget and formatter. And it depends, instead of the Drupal 7 version, by a, uh, independent, I mean, uh, is a GLP PHP, geospatial library on PHP. It's not uh, another Drupal module as it was before, but it depends on, on this uh, PHP uh, uh, library that is uh, the most adopted one. Okay, let's have a look. Okay, this is the, the project page, Drupal, Drupal 8 project page. You can see me here, not so, few, not so many commits. This model didn't need to do much changes, just some bug fixes. And there is a lot of adoption. Okay, I just built a the playground in Drupal 8 to, to show you the functionalities of this. Uh, are you able to see well the, the screen? Okay. In this case, we have got a sort of uh, out-of-the-box Drupal 8 installation with two 
basic content tasks that we already know. And uh, the article one has been filled with the geo field, okay? The geo field is a, a new field that uh, is a geo field type and that is able to store geo data. It provides two, some widget, latitude, longitude, the raw, well-known text format, bounding box and uh, degree, minus seconds format. So basic, basic uh, widget to manage the input of this uh, geographical data. That absolutely won't be so user friendly because you will need to, to write the latitude, the longitude for every point and even the well-known text for polylines, polygons or whatever. And uh, <coughs> uh, a formatter, okay? Formatter that might be a latitude, longitude and a row output. So that if uh, we add the content, we might have, we might put this one, test geo article. And then I should put some coordinates here, let's say. Let's say this one should be Europe's surface. This way I'm able to, to manage some information in a geographic format. Uh, this is not so, I mean, impressive, but it's very powerful because it gives us the, the basic, the model to store the data. And this is uh, the point from whatever else we are going to show is coming from. We now take advantage of the <coughs> nice uh, develop generate uh, model and we can create um, a bunch of 50, 50 fake articles. So the article is also filled with, uh, with an image and uh, okay, if I see, look at it, I, he has created uh, 51, so we've got 51 contents here. But there is no special way to see it, just some content and uh, the, the, the text geo field data. I also created here a starting view. This is a view that is listing all these, uh, these uh, geo articles with the some out, output uh, a display, view display that uh, shows the geo field and whatever. That's it. Geo field makes this. Not so impressive, but not very powerful. Ah, of course, you should install using Composer and you may enable using Drudge. The second part, I mean the second component of this whole geofield stack is the geofield map module. That is the one that I created, that this is my baby. Big baby now, it's not so baby. It's, it's quite mature, very powerful and even, yeah, easy to use but advanced and complex model now. It adds to Geofield customizable Google uh, Geofield map widget with both Google Maps and Leaflet support. And uh, Geofield map formatters with the Google Maps API and Google Maps static APIs support. Uh, just to mention, Geofield map has got both uh, Geo Google Maps and Leaflet for the widget. Is, do you know Leaflet uh, JavaScript uh, mapping library? Is everybody aware about Leaflet? It's a really open source uh, mapping library. Google Maps is not. Uh, the, the formatters that they just rely on Geofield map, they just rely on Google Maps. So th this module has got this limit that is structural. Now is for is supporting for at the moment just Google Maps for is rendering to the users. I will show you in a moment. And then there is the, the support for uh, 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 a geofield map view style to make views with uh, Google Maps and uh, a lot of configuration and mainly, let's say, uh, info window, advanced info window setup. So the pop-up, you can really customize the way and also marker clustering for making the maps more readable. And uh, this is, uh, very uh, outstanding functionalities that I worked a lot on is uh, the capability to output dynamic markers. So the markers are all, all 
they're not all the same for every feature, but they may change depending on some uh, condition, maybe, maybe the entity type, the taxonomy terms, and, uh, and uh, whatever. And the system is plugin based, so it's really scalable. Okay, let's have a look. I just a practical look. I'm uh, enabling now the module. It was already being downloaded with Composer, installed with Composer. So that now, when I look at the, my, my, my content type uh, article, I can see that now the geofield, the geofield has got another widget that is geofield map. The geofield map might be enabled and configured. Of course, based as it is based on Google Maps, it will require a Google Maps API key, API key that we might not use now at the moment, and because it will rely on the leaflet library if uh, it doesn't find any Google Maps API. A lot of configuration, I will skip them. So that now I have enabled this, geo, this widget and now I'm able to, to put the, the marker with the, this uh, ma interactive map that is much easier because it let me, let me know better where I'm putting, you know? There is these, uh, these two fields that are written by the, the click on the map and that is also draggable. Uh, I can put, if I put inside the Google Maps API, mm -hmm. but uh, of course I'm still like that. For this occasion, the module has got a configuration settings page. So that now, if I go to one of my articles, And I add it then. Uh, there is a new functionality that is based on geocoding. So now I can, I can write something and we will find the location in Fire State Building. So I will enable to, to use geocoding capabilities. I can even take advantage of, of other nice functionalities that are enlarged by the Google Maps. I can change the, okay, the tiles behind and I can use even the Google Places uh, library so that it can, will look also for commercial activities and uh, whatever. Everywhere is really instant to the, the, the search and the, the find. And there are a lot of uh, settings. Ah, in this case, I also enabled the, the so-called uh, HTML geolocation functionality so that uh, it may find by itself the, the location. At the same time as the widget, uh, the, the model provides a formatter. So instead of just latitude and longitude, uh, I can uh, enable a geofield map formatter with a lot of features here and configuration. For instance, this is interesting. I mean, uh, everything is compliant with the Google Maps V3 uh, framework. And uh, so these settings, uh, they do set this kind of stuff. But there are also smart solutions like just a text box that uh, uh, admit the jail, uh, JSON strings so you can, uh, for example, with this one, uh, you can uh, insert uh, uh, customization regarding the maps uh, here, uh, customization regarding uh, eventual polygons, line string, for example, you see stroke color. You can write here your own JSON if uh, that is validated and that is parsed on the map. And in this way, you are able, the model is able to let you customize the, the way it outputs. 
the result. And uh, I can uh, even create uh, a sort of a custom styled map. Let's say I prepare, for, for example, this one, a dark style. So in this case, I enabled this, uh, this formatter for one of my, so I've got a, the output now be, has become a map, has become a map with some nice feature like uh, the full screen. There is also the cap possibility to make a reset map control. We can use also street view because we are in Google, in Google Maps. And we are also able to, to apply our custom style map, okay? This kind of customization is uh, totally free and might be achieved with the external solution. Uh, as I said, there is a, a great care to the user, to the information to the user, the tips to the user. If I go to the, this, uh, this section regarding the custom style map, it says, hey, you can go on the snappy maps and have a bunch of uh, a lot of custom map styles you can apply to your one, okay? This is free resources, so you can put on that. As I said, Google, Geofield Map Module is enabling also the, the view plugin, so this view might be customized and made a, not a, a, a form, unformatted list or table, or whatever, but a geofill map. Okay, he's already filling the, the geofill. He needs a geofill loaded uh, uh, among the fields. Otherwise, he will ask for. He was filling the, the same Google Maps API, and here, I can set, uh, let's say, I post the start room, show you why, but by, I'm skipping the map training. I can, yeah, customize the info window. The info window is very important. I can say, okay, when I click on the, on the feature, what should be the output? Of course, maybe the title of the feature, uh, maybe also something more complex, even I can render the, the, the render the, the, the entity itself in the different view modes. In this case, uh, I just prepared an info window view mode. And I can customize also the icon, uh, uh, icon image, uh, the icon image with, with different kind of uh, possibility. I will show you. Uh, there is this, the, this custom style and map. In this case, I'm, I'm going to render a views with a bunch of contents. So, so, okay, let's do that without the marker cluster to, to show you what might be the downside of this approach. So I've changed the, the, the display, the style of the map. And in this case, okay, let's make it better. Okay, you can see this is rendering all the dummy contents that uh, the generate model did for me, and it's put, uh, it's written geofields, uh, it's put uh, everywhere in the world. It's nice to see that he, he also created uh, some uh, dummy, da well-known text, okay? So you can see that uh, he's, uh, he's rendering out uh, something that is different from a point. This is the, the proof that uh, the model is uh, supporting this kind of, uh, okay. But when I click on it, it doesn't happen anything. Why, you don't know, actually I know. So when I click on this, uh, he will is is opening the the info window with the, the info window view style that I set for for the info window itself. Okay, so the opportunity to output very complex, very complex info windows, even styled because uh, everything is a CSS. I can really fine tune the output of. Uh, in the, in my in my experience, there is this uh, this I mean. Uh, is a game changer, the, the way you output your map. You can do a map, <laughs> but it's just with a Google marker and a lot of markers, one upon, upon the other is, is nice. I got a map, but it's not reusable at all, okay? 
So with this model, I can fine tune the result. First of all, I will make it higher, higher. Then I will enable market clustering. And uh, I can say, I might say that, uh, for example, the feature, the, po the geometries uh, should be clickable. So clickable is not true, is not false, but it's true. So the output will be given in this case. Ah, actually, yes, why is uh, starting here? Because I forced, uh, and I was wrong, uh, I forced the, the zoom, or the, the starting zoom, okay, let it, let it be free, so it will expand to the extent of the contents. And you can see here, uh, I've got the, the market clustering. The market clustering uh, that I can define the way it behaves, uh, limiting the zoom. I can say it from this zoom forward, uh, the, the, the clustering won't, uh, won't, uh, won't, won't, won't work. Uh, in this case, uh, you can see that, as I said, now the, the, ma the, the polygon is uh, clickable and uh, it opens the info window uh, on another place because uh, in this case, these contents are multi-field. I mean, in the same field, I can store more than one feature. So this uh, info window is caring about uh, not just that line, but the bunches of line, they do depend to the, to the field. <coughs> so, okay, sorry, uh, how is going? Is it too much? Is boring? Or I, is it okay? Okay. Is it too slow? Too quick? Okay, good. Because there is a lot of stuff. Okay. If you have a question, please do that. I will try to go on. On this model, there is a, a lot of stuff to, to be explained, much more functionalities and potential, but uh, I'm confident that you will get at the, at the end of the presentation. Now we are, we are going to speak, uh, okay, the limitation of this one, Google Maps now uh, charges you, and they increase the fees uh, at the last summer, so someone doesn't want to use Google Maps, really. It's a, it's a, a request that I, I'm having uh, from a lot of users, and it's quite uh, understandable, because it's not open source, it's half open source. I mean, actually it's open source, but it's not free at all because you, you sh should pay. Now, actually, if you want to, to create your own Google Maps APK, you will need to provide the credit card number. It's quite, <laughs> it's quite uh, scary uh, for the new Google Maps API. Actually, this one we didn't have to. Uh, so, a very, very valid alternative. Uh, actually, the ones that I will like the most, I love this model, this, uh, this framework is the leaflet model. The one, the guy that created it is great, and now he's working for Mapbox, that is the best mapping company, company in the world, in my opinion. The leaflet model is a, is a Drupal 8 model that uh, uh, integrates the leaflet JavaScript uh, mapping library into Drupal 8, uh, and uh, is mainly focused uh, on the front end. So really what Google uh, Geofield Map is missing, because Geofield Map is providing a, a leaflet uh, widget on the, on the back end, but is missing the front end. So the leaflet module is a good way to uh, output the geofield with leaflet. <coughs> leaflet JavaScript library that is free. And uh, it's got some API keys. Um, I can customize the way the maps are out output with the, this hook uh, that uh, every, ca every, every custom module may provide and is integrated with the leaflet marker cluster model that is very basic in V8, but just does what it needs to do. And uh, has got some limited support for uh, dynamic uh, uh, markers. Uh, I will show you throughout the tokens approach. This is the model. <coughs> you can see I found myself as now the maintainer. This model actually is supported, but is not fully developed uh, because in my opinion, uh, I, I mean, uh, my roadmap of this model should be part of the geofield map, 
but let's see, maybe it might stay by itself. Anyway, so in this case, uh, I just uh, already downloaded the model with the composer and uh, I can enable it with Rush. <coughs> okay. So once done, my geo article, I can bypass, I can skip. the geofield map format uh, and use a leaflet map. The leaflet map uh, settings are quite easy. I can choose different kind of uh, uh, tiles, background tiles. Uh, in this case, the, 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 the model comes just with the uh, OpenStreetMap uh, map NIC. These other two are provided by a custom model of mine, just write, writing that uh, hook, very easy and everything is documented in the, in the leaflet API file. And I can set the zoom, minimus zoom, maximum zoom, icon, custom icon. I can customize the, the icon just pointing a, a, a image R. And uh, okay, let's see what uh, might be the output. I increase the height of the map here as well. I make a pop-up info window and uh, I can Customize the pop-up here with the custom code, the custom, custom text, uh, but uh, also with the uh, replacement patterns, I mean, using token, okay? I can customize the, 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 the output or the info window. It's a different approach. Maybe less user-friendly, but uh, uh, efficient anyway. So that uh, I change the formatter for my content uh, so that when I click to one of the you can see here, this is a, a leaflet map. You can see the attribution here. This is completely free. Okay, so you don't have to even uh, input any, any key to use this one. And it's very, very, very powerful. It's very uh, clean and elegant and it's very quick and mobile friendly. So leaflet is amazing JavaScript mapping framework, in my opinion, the best one. But yeah, we should say that model now is lacking if compared to the geofield map model. And in this case, uh, no, this, in this case, this is, uh, the, this is the view, it's still uh, uh, Google Maps, but I can change uh, because the leaflet model gives, uh, gives me a view style here as well when I can set. This configuration, let's try another kind of uh, settings. Here as well, icon R, shadow R, I can really customize the, the, the output of the, of the icons. And uh, here as well, you can see that uh, Leaflet is able to render the, the geometries, okay? You can see the tiles on the background uh, is that kind of style. Uh, as it is in Google Maps, there are a lot of uh, possible custom styles that we can, we can integrate. Actually, this is done not with a plugin that is typical of the, of the V8 approach, but this is a sort of old style in the dot module I can uh, I can add the new styles uh, with, uh, with this hook. This one, okay? Italo module is this module that I created just for some demo, demo functionality, demo integration, and uh, this is the hook uh, that defines a new kind of leaf leaflet background uh, style, map style, but also defines the, the property of the, of the map. If it should be draggable, if uh, uh, the scroll wheel should work, uh, also even the, the, the custom marker. So this is uh, I mean, not so user-friendly from the point of view of uh, uh, 
user interface, but is powerful because it gives us the possibility to customize the output. Okay, good. Then there is the fourth model. That is, this is, okay. This is really the beast, is the Jocoder model. And uh, now I found myself, <laughs> uh, yeah, main maintainer of this model because uh, Paul, Paul Dallera is a Spanish guy, one of the best developers in, in Grupo. Uh, now he's working uh, in the European Commission and couldn't stay uh, caring about these models. So I just gave me the, the, the grants and now I'm 144 commits. I brought this model from the alpha release to the stable release and it's full of amazing, amazing functionalities. Why? Because this is the most advanced, complete, and easy to use solution to process geocode and the reverse geocode operations in Drupal, on Drupal entities. Is uh, depending uh, itself on a third party library that is uh, called Geocoder Library. Is the, the most powerful, absolutely uh, supported and developed, and now has reached uh, the four, uh, number four release. And uh, uh, it is very powerful because relies on these PHP libraries, geocoder libraries, uh, that embeds uh, a lot of different kind of uh, geocoder plugins and uh, engines. So I can geocode stuff not just with the Google Maps geocoder, but with a lot of other providers like uh, RPGs Online, OpenStreetMap, uh, Bing, uh, and uh, uh, Whatever, no, not in whatever. It's quite limited in this version. They are expanding, and but just a matter of creating the plugin. So I can operate uh, geocoding and reverse geocoding operations uh, on different kind of providers that might be commercial, might be uh, free, and whatever. And is able to transform. Is also dumping the result. I can take, uh, for example, an address, uh, transform it in, in a coordinate, and uh, transform it in GeoJSON, in KML, and it supports also the GPX, uh, so the GPS uh, traces, and uh, is working really, really well, I, I wanna show you. And, uh, and that's it. And uh, yeah, I wanna show you also this one, is very nice, I recently implemented also the capability to fetch information from just the images. You, when, you, when you take a shot, when you take a shot with the, your iPhone, you are taking a picture, but you're also storing a lot of uh, metadata regarding the camera or whatever, but also the location. And uh, this model is able to fetch, to catch the location and uh, geolocate, geotag the, the image instantly in the, in the content. Let me show you. In this case, Uh, actually, imp is interesting because um, this model has got sub models, so it provides uh, API for geocoding operation. Uh, operation it uh, creates a service for each providers, and uh, with the, the sub models it enables these kind of operation among fields. So it's called geocoder field, and uh, integrates with the geo field, the, the, our, our king with the, the geocoder geofield submodel and integrates also with the address, the, with the address, uh, with the address field uh, model. And uh, okay, so we can enable in our dummy demo application and see what it lets us to do. Okay, so let's try. I've got my content. Uh, let's say that uh, in my article, I just want, okay, yes, okay. I just want to create the geo field starting from another field. In our case, uh, I created, uh, I've got the, the body, no? The body is a text field and I can say on the geo field that it should be created by a, Geocode operations starting from the body using one of the available plugins 
Google Maps, I can enable more of them because I can define an order of this plugin and uh, the first one will, will be the one, the first to try to geocode. If it doesn't succeed, the second one will try and uh, until a, a result is output and uh, it stops. It has got a configuration page so that I can configure set to these uh, plugins. Uh, there are some plugins that they do need uh, an API key, otherwise they won't work, and uh, Google Maps is one of them, so I may use the same uh, Geofield Map uh, API key that I used before. In this case, we are, okay, let's put it here. Maybe we, we, might, we might need it later. And I need to, to make use of here. So in this case, uh, I just said that the, the geofill should be tried to be geocoded starting from the from the from the body of the content. So if I add a new article. I can even add this one. Actually, may want may not be may be not so clear here the power of this operation, but it's very powerful. We're going to use this uh, capability later on. It'll be very clear. So instead of filling here the content, uh, I'm just. Uh, Say Union Square, New York. And that's it. Okay? He gets the, in, a, in, in just a, less than a second, uh, he has sent the request to the provider that has answered in some way, JSON, whatever, XML, and gave us the result. And that is in the format that, that the, the, the module is able to parse and uh, transform and write in, D, in the DB as a well-known text. But uh, this module is, is able also to do a lot of other stuff. For example, I've created, uh, we have got another field that is a sort of string. And I can say that uh, this uh, string uh, will be populated as a result of a reverse geocode. So he will reverse geocode from what? From the geofield. So when the geofield is written starting from the body, then the string address is written starting from the geofield based on, yes, then again, I can choose my, my provider, okay? And I can also decide the way it should be output. In this case, yeah, let's say well-known text. Okay, so that when I do it again, the geocode article, let's say it works because, yeah, okay. I can now change, it won't, if I save it again, it won't geocode from the body because it's smart. I mean, we made it smart. We don't want to, to make the geocoding operation for every save because it will cost some quote from the, the provider. So now we are able to change this one, maybe better fine tune, so I can change the place, and uh, let's put it here close to post Prospect Park somewhere. And I save it. When I save it, let's see what has happened. You, you see here, there is a, the string value that is being populated with the value, the reverse geocode of the geofield that I tuned. Actually, I should have worked, I mean, this kind of order might matter with the subsequent uh, operation so that I might have uh, made, it, made it higher, the weight. So to be sure that this operation may, may happen after that the geofield has been written. Okay. 
And the funny thing is, for example, is that uh, if I don't like, I mean, this is what is written in the field, but maybe I want to, I want to output to the user in a different way. So the geocoder model gives us also some formatter. So starting from the value of the field, I want, using the same kind of, uh, I want to output the, as a, another format, maybe the address. Let's try and see if it's able. And this is happening, it's not rewriting anything, it's just doing this at runtime. Oh, okay, yeah, we put in Russia, okay, no, okay. Might be better, um, this is the meaning anyway. So there are, there are, uh, Geocoder model is working also on the front end as a formatter, so a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, formats. And it's nice, this is nice to, to see, for example, coming here, I took a picture of us and I took it with my iPhone so that I want to, I might try to enable this functionality to, to geocode the geofield starting from the possible image. And uh, I added uh, an image to this, uh, this content. So in this case, the geofield, I can change this way to be geocoded and say, okay, from the image. Then uh, I enable file is working in, in a different way. It's not relying on any external geocoder. It's just uh, getting the content of the file and extracting the EXIF metadata and specifically the, the, the geo GPS uh, information. So that uh, when I, for example, add a content, I call it geo image. I load my, my image here. Ta -da. Should be somewhere in the Rockefeller Center. Actually, this is very cool. Was it right? Not that right, maybe. <laughs> okay. But we can still fine tune and yeah, maybe probably because we didn't use the best geocoder. No, I don't know. Probably it wasn't able to my 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 iPhone connection wasn't that good. I can still okay fine tune this one. Uh, actually this is nice. I mean uh, this has happened because an entrepreneur contacted me and said, Oh, geofield is great, but the geotagging is not working. What? Geotagging? I was working with the geofield map with the inputting, you know, the, the coordinates with the map. He said, oh, no, I want to, okay, when I load the image, it doesn't fulfill the, I said, ah, yes, you can get the, the, info, the geo info from the image. So this is uh, implemented now, okay? This is very cool. The same thing will work also with the, uh, with the files and other kind of uh, geo content like GPS, uh, traces uh, and uh, KML files and GeoJSON files. I wanna show. <clears throat> okay, here the, the most, I, I'm sorry, I'm, getting, I'm going very quick, but um, I'm confident that I'm giving you some clue of the, the capability of all this stuff that has got a lot of more or, or more um, uh, potential and more configuration. This guy now, uh, I wanna show you the, 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 the writing, I mean the, the demo, this is the real time demo that I built because uh, I thought what I'm gonna show them, what I'm gonna speak about. I'm here in New York since May. I'm a fan of taking shots, pictures, and discovered a lot of places. So, that, so I said, okay, let's try to build a, a sort of a geo content, uh, uh, geo, WebGIS of special places, so I took some picture of mine and then I will show you I was able with this uh, bunch of models to, to build this. Uh, uh, this is a live demo, so finger crossed <laughs> and for the Italians, okay, this is a, a lot of color that uh, might work, everything might work. 
Uh, actually, I'm set up another branch. Everything is done, uh, of course, in Git. And uh, this is the project. Uh, at the moment, we just are, uh, we were working on this branch at the start. Now we're switching on the, on the, the advanced one. And let's see if it works. So now, the matter is that, uh, okay, there is a lot of content inside. I want to get rid of it just with this nice little module that is called brush delete all. I want to try to delete all the, all the dummy content that we have created before. Let's see if it actually erased it. Okay, so it's clean again. So I switched on this branch. And I will try to import the new configurations. Okay, where is Alessio? Alessio? Alessio is gone. Okay. This is the beauty of uh, Drupal 8. Is everybody working with Drupal 8 and configuration sync system here? Yeah. Yeah. This is amazing because, I mean, it's, it's, everything is done well or quite well and doesn't break. It really changed the, the, the application and enhances it just like this. So now this application has been filled with a lot of new structure, specifically with the new content types, uh, the geo-image, the geo-place, and the geometry. It has got some specific uh, fields. For example, the geo-place, of course, uh, there is the geo-field, the geo-image, the uh, a sort of categorization of a kind of place because uh, first of all, I want to input in this system the, some special place that I discovered in New York has become familiar for me and uh, uh, with taxonomies, kind of, maybe a restaurant, maybe a gym, maybe whatever. So I can start here inputting a geo place, writing his name, subtitle, the place type, the rating even, and whatever. Of course, I won't do that here end by end, but uh, I created a file like in Excel. I'm using uh, Mac, so I'm using numbers. Actually, it was, uh, it was much more efficient than, that, than Excel. So I made this kind of sheet. Sheet. <laughs> um, that is a list of uh, some familiar place, no? that is the Seymour, that is a restaurant, uh, the Sex and the City Brownstone, Paquette, uh, the Columbia University, Gannuri, that is a very good uh, Korean restaurant. And with some information, actually I'm not inputting the latitude and longitude, uh, to make it easier, just the address. And the web link, even a, an image are a rating type and whatever. And these few information for a, a sort of a demo, demo content. Actually in Drupal 8, uh, thanks God, is working quite well the developing version of the feeds model. So instead of uh, using migrate, it might, might be too much complex. For sure in this case of mine, I created some feed types. So the first one is to import the geo plays. I just created some mapping. I defined an import from the CSV, CSV format file and whatever. Then just uh, writing this, uh, this uh, sheet and uh, exporting as a CSV. I put myself in the condition to import this data in a batch process, uh, creating a feed like this, geoplace. I selected the source file. Here. Yeah. 
<coughs> actually it's taking some time also because he's uh, uploading pictures from the web. So everything was successful, thanks God. And uh, so he has imported some content are this stuff, so the same one that we saw listed in the numbers file, the Excel file, but here it is already mapped with a nice info window. Okay, this is using the Geofield map model, so it's a Google Maps map, a Google Maps map. And these are some some information, nice information that I mapped on. on uh, this is a fat cat, <laughs> really fat. <laughs> Actually, there is a comparable leaflet map that is using some custom marker. This is my. Tennis Table Academy. And uh, actually, I can also, to make it more populated, uh, fill geo images. I just uh, extracted some of a lot, so many nice pictures I had of New York. Most of them taken by my iPhone. So here we are with uh, just a, we just need the R. We just need the R. We put in a, in a web server, just point to the the, the URI, URI, and the fill it in the in the in the feed the importer. So I create a new importer. Pointing the okay. We have got some time, maybe one minute. You can see here should mm. yeah. I'm transferring data. Seems that is important. Okay. Some question in the meantime. Meanwhile. Okay. Are you still alive? <laughs> can you react? <laughs> Yeah, right, okay, yeah, because I didn't uh, exactly, uh, sorry? Okay, yes, actually I didn't describe uh, what is the structure of this, uh, uh, this content. Uh, yes, uh, actually it is uh, not working on the address field, but on the string address, that is, the address field is, um, um, has got this uh, address field, uh, Okay, show you. Sorry? No, 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 it works, absolutely. I mean, the, in this case, it's working. Uh, the operation is doing is this one. You see the string address uh, is being ported uh, by, by this one. So it's taking this one, this field. And it writes the, the geo field at the same time that the, there is the address field that is being filled, is geocoded by the, the string address. I might have written, I mean, it's quite, I don't know if the feeds model is able to fill the address field. Maybe it should. Absolutely, yes, yes, yeah. it, it, spill, it splits the address and uh, has got subfields, of course. Yes, but this is compatible. Absolutely, yes. Uh, actually, you can see uh, if I go, no, the, not the geo image, I can filter out the, okay, let's focus on the geo place. I take a geo place. Uh, Okay, the Apple Fifth Avenue. Apple Fifth Avenue. Where is it? You can see the geo field, the address field is filled. Okay, it's filled by the import. Actually, it's not the import. It's a geo code operation from the string address field that is text plane. So it's filled, and this might be the source for the geo field. So with the feeds, you fill 
you fill the address, and from the address you can fill the geofield. Yeah, in D7 there was a feature where you would say you would add the address field, and then after you add a geofield, and you say take the address from the address field. Yeah, yeah. Convert yeah. that to latitude longitude. But I didn't see that option D8. In uh, geocoder there is. Yes, there is. I mean, maybe I don't. Maybe I didn't play too much with the with this module. I mean, in GeoCoder, you can see that there are these sub modules. There is one is GeoCoder address that whose aim is just to integrate uh, the GeoCoder operation from and to the address field. You should try. Okay. It works. I mean, it's the most tricky field. I I may have not found all the uh, required module for this. Absolutely, try it out, and if it is not, post an issue because it's, we are caring about that. Okay, yeah. thank you. So what was the outcome of uh, our geo images? As you can see here, there, is, uh, there are other stuff. I mean, the, the, the fuchsia are the place of interest, and the oranges are my pictures. Okay, so just with the gnarl, with the NARL, he imported the, 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 the image and he read in the image the AXIF location and put on the map. So it's very slight. And the nice stuff is that uh, the feed importer is able to cron its operation. So I can uh, fill this uh, S CSV file with the new files and uh, when I wake up in the morning, I will see my application filled with the new geotagged images on the map. Uh, another, another content is the geometry. The geometry, as I was saying, it just uh, uses a, a file field, so not, just a, not, not an image, a file field and a geo field. The geo field is being populated by the file content using these three kind of uh, uh, providers, a GPX1, a GeoJSON file, and KML. So one of each, if they find the proper format, will translate into well-known text. So in this case, uh, I take these, uh, in our case, I take this setup to To import, to import, manat, no. Okay, yes. To import a GeoJSON file that uh, I already stored somewhere here. There are many resources of GeoJSON, open data, and whatever. So I just uh, loaded the, the GeoJSON file here and I don't do anything else. I just save uh, and I find this, this polyline. This is still a geo field, but it is uh, multi point, multi line, with polygons, and uh, becomes part of my nice map. Actually, I can, I can unpublish JFK to make the map more. Okay. The nice thing is here, as you can see, that uh, the the markers they are changing depending uh, on the on the J, uh, the entity type. So if I filter it on the geo image, it just this is Ajax behavior as well. It doesn't download uh, up, um, reload the page. Okay, so this uh, thematization is based on the entity type, uh, and uh, I would do that. I do that uh, with this uh, view style configuration of the geofield map that is a quite advanced tool. There is this section that uh, let me set different kind of uh, rules to make uh, the marker dynamic, uh, maybe based on the entity type, on the taxonomy term, on the list type, whatever. For example, there are there is this this old one was nice to have, 
uh, I can here upload, for example, an icon, even my, my, my one, and you even have the, the preview. I don't save, otherwise uh, the configuration will, will change. I can save it, yeah, okay. And uh, the, 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 the downside of this, uh, I made a lot of work on this to realize that is not compatible with the config synchronization because it's a managed file is writing in the configuration the file ID that won't be present uh, in, the, in the production. So uh, the, the proper way to work is with the URI, file URI, okay? So with the, with the select here in the, in the module settings, uh, I am setting the the, the schema where the uh, markers, files, images should be stored. In this case, it's public uh, geofilm map icons. And uh, here is, uh, is looking uh, all the files that he finds in this, uh, in this folder, okay? So in this case, is geoplace, PNG, and whatever. So in this case, I can, I can set the different kind of uh, markers depending on some rules. And the uh, even nicer stuff uh, with this model is that uh, it enables, uh, what are we missing on this map? Is every, any, anybody realizing it? It's nice, but from an information point of view to the user, what are we missing? Yeah, it's the meaning of the, of the marker, no? Orange, what is orange? What is a fuchsia, what is, no? Yeah, the labels, yes, thanks, JD, but th that's another. <laughs> labels will be um, real, real GIS. Uh, but actually, we are missing the, the legend. And so, uh, with this model, this model enables uh, a, a legend, place is that, this one, okay, I can choose Geofilm map legend, it enables a dynamic block that uh, actually builds a legend itself selecting the, the, the geofilm map view available in the application. In this case, we are working on these and uh, I just reset some info. I can p customize the, the name of the columns and also put the caption and legend notes and uh, display the title. In this case, it is a entity, entity types legend. Although it's not enough because uh, it's now putting this, this legend everywhere. To make it proper, I will customize this one to be published just uh, on the on the view, okay? And I can even change the order of these. Uh, sorry. The blue are not markers, but uh, marker clustering, okay? That's the output of the marker clustering. It's not a marker, but uh, it means that uh, it's a bunch of markers. Actually, that's uh, the behavior of uh, the marker clustering uh, library. So if you bring in on those, they become pink and, and orange? Yeah, of course. Okay, I can, I can set the, the zoom level, this marker clustering should, uh, shouldn't work. Here, I can even change the grid size of the clustering. I can even disable, okay. Here is specified that everything we write here should be valid JSON, otherwise, if it is not, it won't validate, it will say, hey, it's not valid JSON, this one. Okay, so this is uh, customizable. 
And uh, yeah, nice, you know, I want to show you, for example, in this case, there is the geometry that are the polygons that we didn't, uh, we didn't team, uh, actually because it's not supported. Uh, I mean, we can change, we can change the color um, of, the, of the polygons. Uh, there is a limit support on these. Uh, might be nice, for example, you can say stroke color red. I can do this. Also change the weight. Five, four, okay. So red, very strong. And I can disable, hide this uh, value from the legend. I want to have my new map with this uh, value hidden, okay? Um, good, there is uh, another, okay, some nice, some other nice stuff. I just prepared two other kind of views to have you a clue of what might be accomplished. So one is uh, about rating, outstanding, cool, blah, 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 this kind of, so I can just look at the cool, or the, or the really outstanding, oh no, not Tracer, sorry. Outstanding is Brian Park, of course, hospital, I don't know why I put it outstanding. Paragons, yes, sure. And uh, there is also this one. It's quite uh, more sophisticated because it's based on the taxonomy. Okay. Ah, yeah, actually there is this default value. So we are missing uh, some, some, some stuff, the geo images. So I can change the year, I can go here. Have a look, should be a geo image. Valorize it with the geo image. And make it output. Okay. So now I have uh, back again my orange images. The last thing I want to show you, if you still can resist, <laughs> uh, uh, because recently this was an issue very crowded. Should I quit? It's over? Five minutes? Okay. Uh, this was a, a very crowded issue, more than 20 followers, for me 25, they really wanted a proximity filter for the geo field. That has been, uh, has been implemented. So for example, ah, this is a nice, other nice view, sort of list. We can have also this kind of representation. So a map that do behave independently from each other. Okay, they don't interfere because everything is wrapped with the identifier. So this really supports multi-maps even. And uh, for example, here, but also in, in the other one. Okay, let's try on the other one. This, uh, maybe it's probably more. Here I can add a proximity filter. What is a proximity filter? It's a filter that is working with the geo, the geo data, no? And say, okay, now, because this is Ajax, I need to save before changing them. Uh, I can input the source by a geocode operation, here again, using my, my nice 
geocoders. Okay, let's use also Google Maps. Not as expensive, but for the most accurate. Uh, so this is exposed kilometers. Okay, let's make it meters. Let's see if it works. So now I added uh, to the user these two kind of uh, connected fields. One is a, a distance. So let's make it 500 meters and say and five um, five cat five cat New York. Okay, it's nice because he's looking. At maybe I'm trying. I don't know. Okay. So he's able to find one of three that are the, the, the results that are closer than 500 meters from the fat cat point. So we, we have uh, also some proximity filter function. It's nice because there is also a field. So I can uh, output uh, in the, maybe in the info window here, I can output the dynamic distance from the source of our uh, request and also the ordering. We can also have an order based on the distance from the that might be used uh, might be used here. No, here is I can I, I can implement the same kind of filter and have here the distance written and uh, also a sort of ordering with a click based on the distance. So list please the the closest uh, that are in a range uh, of whatever. And the nice stuff is uh, is that that uh, I mean uh, just uh, the most technical among you. Uh, this uh, implementation, of course, as in uh, DD8, uh, is used to be uh, are plugins. So in this case, I've got an origin from proximity filter, manual origin, client location. I can even let the user say, "Okay, I'm here." So look, let's uh, let give me the result of the closest to me, no? And uh, these are plugins, so everybody is able to, to implement its own plugin that, uh, to, 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 to define the source of the, of the distance of the search. Okay. <clears throat> mm, work has been done also to implement uh, search API. Now, uh, everything works also with the search API facets and the in this is uh, indexing. And that's almost it for tonight. Just, okay, if you. The roadmap, there are some, there is some stuff to be done already in mind, mostly the integration of the geocoder in the geofield map model so that uh, for geocoding operation on the, on the widget, uh, we don't rely just on Google Maps, but we can uh, take uh, advantage of all the geocoders uh, uh, plugins. And uh, yes, as I told you, the, the possible uh, implementation of the leaflet in the geofield map model and a sort of uh, other stuff. And any feedback might come from the community, of course. Thanks. Um, do we have this new feature available or are you going to roll out this new feature that you have in your local? The roadmap ones? No, the one that you just showed us that in your local. Is that already up on the server or? The, all yeah, these views is deployed. I mean, everything I've seen is deployed. It's available for free. Yeah. And, Did I get and, the uh, question? Uh, with this Google Geo code, uh, Geo encoding. Um, so when you uh, input that um, Google API key, that you use that Google API key every time you convert that address. Yeah. So is that mean if I have address, do you use that, you hit the Google API key every single time in order to get the latitude longitude or you can cast that at latitude longitude so that you don't hit the Google map every time? Mm. Because I if I, I mean, mainly yes, yeah. Because I mean, if I have yeah, one Google address, maps, uh, Google it maps. doesn't make sense to hit ah. the Google API to get the latitude longitude every single time. No, of course. No, a geocoder is able to cache the results, 
because uh, yeah, it makes some operation uh, and they are cached usually. We, you can enable in, uh, in GeoCoder, there is an option, should we cache the results? So they're cached. And also in uh, GeoField map settings, when you, when you load, when you, you open the edit uh, page of uh, the GeoField map, uh, it points the place and it also prefills the GeoCode search input uh, with the reverse GeoCode, uh, and that is, uh, might be cached. In a session store, this is a client size caching, okay? So these are tools that uh, uh, limit the geocoding and reverse geocoding operation that you don't need because uh, everything, everything, it, it should be cached. Okay, thank okay? you. And of course you should pay attention when you use, uh, and something that has been asked, of course, is, uh, is uh, oh, hey, uh, why should I rely on uh, Google Maps? Uh, GeoCoder on the GeoField map module. That's why I'm thinking to integrate the GeoCoder. I was trying, I mean, 80% uh, done, but every time there is, I mean, the balls are not steady and we're not stopping. So I have to go back because the model goes away, it goes forward, so with this integration is a, is a little bit difficult. And there are also, there is also another matter. Um, the, the Google Maps uh, keys uh, are restricted. They are restricted uh, depending on the IP or the domain, domain yeah. right? Or you can say, if ever, yeah. use wherever Because you otherwise uh, someone can stall you them. They just can see in the code and stall your key and use it. And the, one of them is, uh, is uh, suitable for client-side operation is the is the IP, I don't remember. The other one is on the, on the server side. So two other, I mean, for the Google Maps operation, two API keys should be given, uh, available to the user, highlighting ge the geolocation module is doing that, okay? For rendering the map or for geocoding in the back end. Actually, the ge geofield map is uh, both rendering the map and geocoding on the, on the client side because, okay, in the widget, uh, that operation is done uh, by the, the JavaScript code, okay? But this is something that should be done. Okay, thank you. Yeah, he's in the role. It's really cool. Um, are there any, like, starter kits or examples that have been set, like, are there case studies of people using this in the wild where someone could see a working example of all these modules on a live site? And have you considered setting up a, you know, you've done a demo, like a, a quick install profile or just a demo module to kind of get the pieces working together so that someone could start to understand. I, I don't know the exact use case, you know, it's like a review site or some, or just, a, yeah, what you kind of did, mapping just different locations in a city where people can see all the parts working together at once. I mean, actually, I'm waking, I, I, to be sincere, I'm looking at, what's going on? Uh, I'm looking uh, time by time uh, at the rate of uh, the adoption of the model, you know? Now, GeoField map uh, is uh, reaching 80,000 downloads, and that's the most sophisticated, considering also the limitation on Google Maps, because it, it uses that also for rendering and it's sticking there. Maybe it might use it also in conjunction with the leafleting, the whatever. So it's being used. Uh, geolocation is the other one. I mean, uh, this is the first demo I do and I prepare on this stuff. I've been working one year. The geocoder side tools are very, very powerful and I know it's being used by the European Commission because there is this uh, Belgian guy from uh, uh, RG, no? that uh, developed uh, the new branch with the, the, com the, the um, uh, all the plugins, the coder plugins are now configuration enabled. So you can build more than one, okay? Configured by yourself. So that is used a lot. Geofield map model, that is baby on mine is being used and uh, yeah I was mining to create a sort of uh, um, the, 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 
examples of application, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. examples of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I will, I don't know, the, if you if you look for possible articles, uh, Job, Mark, D8, Drupal 8, there is no problem at the moment. Yes, okay. So that makes a difference. Somebody makes a review of this, but uh, some, someone from Astia, I know uh, also the ones in Portland, some good developers, they need for their project. So yeah, the showcase, no? Yeah, showcase yeah. area, yeah, would be nice to, where do you, would you put it on the module? On the module page? As a, as a sub-module of, yeah. So a sub-module called, you know, geo field map example yeah. module. Right. Ah, so you, you, you say bundling them right. into, the, right. into the module itself. Uh, no, just, I was minding about getting uh, other users uh, to this case. I know you say pre, pre settings, pre demo. Yeah, pre, yeah preset, yeah. Preset, yeah. Uh, that's why. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. You could turn it off. Uh, All right. Maybe one more. Yeah. One more. I thought on your profile page you'd mentioned you work for the United Nations. So I was just wondering um, if they're utilizing any of this mapping uh, capabilities. Not yet. Not yet. No. Okay. <laughs> Not yet. They're very slow to react <laughs> on everything. All right. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. That was great. Do you, Holing, do you want to just change the input? Hold on, we got like three seconds worth, worth, of, worth of stuff to, to keep doing. Oh, and I need the little clicker. Otherwise, I can't just go click. And, you know, there we go. All right, click. Uh, all right, so real quick. Um, the next meet, actually, one, one little note. Uh, Italo was saying that um, he, he tracks the downloads of, of the modules. And I just, I've noticed something very interesting over the years. If you look at the module downloads of any module, any project on Drupal.org, in December, every year, there's this huge dip, which leads me to believe that the modules actually go on vacation, right? Websites go on vacation every year, which is fascinating to me. Um, no, there are reasons why, but I found it fascinating. Anyway, next meetup is right here in this room on March 6, 2019. Um, make sure two things, make three things. Make sure that you sign up on meetup.com so that we know you're coming. Make sure that you put the name that exists on your ID in meetup.com. Uh, every time I do the security list for downstairs, there's always one person who, who just puts like A or, or, or you know, something like that, um, or, they're, or Bleen, right? They're, that, no, they, they don't, they're not gonna let people in in that case. Um, and also, um, don't have two people registered with in, on meetup.com if you're only one person, right? You can't put, you know, Alex and Bob, right, coming. You just have Alex register and have Bob register, please. And then lastly, um, to the March meetup, it's uh, bring two friends of yours to the meetup meetup. That's the theme of the meetup. So bring two people that you know to the meetup. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's our next meetup. Um, as always, speakers, organizers, members, people want to get involved, uh, people have ideas, please come in and let us know about that. Drupal.myc slash suggest, or definitely come on the Slack channel and just tell us and talk to us, have conversations. We're not that scary. Um, and after party, downstairs, Bill's Bar and Burger. Uh, you can enter on 51st Street. Um, that's it. Everyone get the hell out.